And they are so close, in their hearts and minds they are so close. The African as a whole is so close to Islam, as Ed Jewell said. That the religion which the African will accept is a religion which best suits his needs. And that religion, everyone who has a right to speak on the subject says is Islam. You come to the Zulus or the whole of Southern Africa. You ask them, you believe in God? I said, yes. Before the white man came, did you have a concept of God? He said, yes. What's his name? So the Zulus will tell you, Umvelingangi. Umvelingangi. Sounds like Wallahu Ghani. Umvelingangi. So you ask him, what is his Umvelingangi? What is he like? So he tells us in his language, he says, Aum Nimzan, sir. We are in a umwe, umwele. He is a pure and holy spirit. Agazali ena fudi agazalwanga. He does not beget and is not begotten. Fudi agokuluto lofana nae. And there's nothing like unto him. Say, have you been reading the Quran? So what's that? What's that Quran? Never heard of it. But he is giving you the translation of Surah Ikhlas. This is his belief. He said, why did you people have an image of your God? A caricature of your God? A statue of your God? He says, no. Couldn't you carve out of wood the shape of a man or an elephant or a snake? He said, yes. Or make out of clay the shape of a man or a woman? He said, yes. Then why didn't you do it? He said, how? How? That's his way of saying exclamation. How? He says, sir, how can you make an image of a spirit? And I've been boasting that south of the Zambezi, not a single African tribe ever worshipped images before the white man came. Not one. They all worship God. These Zulus call him Umvelingangi. The Khazas call him Tiko. The Basutus call him Mudimo. Different, different name, but the concept, same. Islamic, Islamic, Islamic. But the white man made us to call them Kafirs. Kafirs, Kafirs. These are all Kafirs. These are enemies. Are they? To me, they are the true Muslims. Without the label. The concept is Islamic. I just go to Sudan. In April I was there in Sudan. Now I have a sickness. Sickness of learning languages. If I go to a new country, I want to learn the man's language. Like that, I can give you samples of 20 different languages. What you want to hear? Indonesian, Malaysian, Swahili. What do you want to hear? Spanish. What do you want to hear? English, Afrikaans, Zulu. What do you want to hear? Indonesian. Huh? Indonesian. Indonesian. Tengokla, Tanganku, Dan Kakiku, Inila Aku Sendiri, Jamahla Aku Dan Lihatla, Karena Hantu Tiada Berdaging Dan Tulang, Seperti Yang Kamu Lihat Ada Padaku. No, no. 20 years, 15 years ago, you see, the WAMI, World Assembly of Muslim Youth in Riyadh, they gave me a ticket to go to Indonesia. They gave me a ticket to go to Indonesia. Immediately, it's right. I must learn the Indonesian. So I went and bought an Indonesian Bible. And I learned this, and I rattled it off. It's right. Now I can go along and communicate with the people easily. I said, look, this is a tribute I'm paying to your language. I'm making an effort to speak your language. So I win your sympathy. Same time, they gave me a ticket to go to Nigeria. <laughs> 15 years ago, 1977, they gave me a ticket to go to Nigeria. That's right. So I got the Nigerian Hausa Bible in the Hausa language. And I learned. Guduba, Hanuana, Da Sawayana, Nineda, Kuina, Tabani, Kugash. I learned it 15 years ago. And I want to go to Nigeria. So I can talk to the people more easily.